In the state's capital, three explosions from packages delivered to doorsteps. There are two people dead in the last uh, 11 days now, mm-hmm. and two of those explosions happened just yesterday in Austin. One woman has a life-threatening injury, still fighting for her life this morning as the authorities try and find out who is responsible. What goes into this kind of investigation? Let's talk to Dr. Alex Del Carmen. He is a criminologist and considered an authority on the topic of police practices and procedures, including uh, discrimination, racism, racial profiling, and police ethics. He is the executive director for School of Criminology and Criminal Justice at Tarleton State University, and he joins us right now. Uh, Dr. Del Carmen, thank you so much for being here. What do you think is going to be the first step in 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 this uh, typically this kind of case there in Austin for authorities to look into? What what goes into an investigation like this? Good morning, and thanks for having me this morning. Well, first and foremost, you know, know that the law enforcement community in Texas is you know far above and beyond the rest of the country, and then we also have the federal entities like the FBI that know really. Have a, have a great deal of knowledge as to what to do in these types of uh, of events, and so so you know even though this is a, obviously a very difficult case to solve, you know you have the best of the best working on it. I will tell you that typically what they do is they they trace back uh, what we call the signature of the explosion. And what that means is that we know that there's been always going to be some DNA involved. Uh, we know that there's always going to be a, a, a certain type and make. Uh, of the explosive, uh, how the person went about putting this together, what type of methodology was followed, how it was triggered, what type of explosives were bought, whether it was done professionally, whether the person has a military background, or perhaps the, the individual read something online that led that person to put it together. So all of those things go into the investigation, but it's a very meticulous and a very disciplined process. You know, we won't have an answers right away. But I'm confident that eventually authorities will find this this person. What about profiling here? Because we know that the first victim, African-American, the 17-year-old that was killed yesterday, an African-American male, and the 75-year-old woman who uh, is still suffering life-threatening injuries, a Hispanic female, uh, what are we to read into that? Or I guess what are authorities to read into that in profiling uh, this suspect? I mean, it obviously goes into into that typology that we try to put together for, for who the bad person is, right? So we know in this case that the type of victim, maybe the age, geographic location, if you look at where the victims, you know, where the explosives were found, um, there's some sort of a linear trend, uh, perhaps divided by a highway. All of these things matter, and the race of the person matters. Of course it does, but typically when we have these bombers, we know that there's an ideology that they follow. They try to make uh, some sort of a, an ideological statement. If you remember back in the days, uh, the Unabomber uh, even required for his manifesto to actually be publicized in a major newspaper. So we know that, that typically there, there is something that drives this person to commit this type of crime. And in this case, it could very well be that this person has a racial motive behind it. Well, paranoia sweep the state. Now, uh, you know, here, Dallas, Fort Worth, El Paso, packages on the door. What will, will that, do you foresee that happening? Well, you know, I mean, I think, first of all, you know, people should be careful, obviously. I mean, we, we live in a time right now that, that this is obviously uh, something that can happen to all of us. But, but at the same time, I mean, you know, using common sense, having cameras, you know, if the package comes from an order that you've placed, I mean, obviously the, the risk is minimized. Uh, but, yes, I mean, I can see people being afraid, especially in the Austin area, uh, to open their packages and, and at the very least be aware of it, and, and they should. In profiling the individual, the suspect here, authorities tell us that these bombs were sophisticated to the point that they were set to go off when they were either moved or the boxes were open. What does that tell you about the background or the skill set of the suspect? You know, it tells me that the person was probably radicalized whether in a foreign nation or perhaps domestically, maybe the person has a military background, maybe the individual uh, has had some foreign training on how to do this. Um, you know, keep in mind that we have many enemies in the United States, 
uh, not only uh, outside of the U.S., but within the U.S. as well. And so, so clearly this person is, what it does tell me is this person is very disciplined uh, in the sense that they haven't really come out on social media and claimed responsibility. person has been quiet, has been meticulous in the number of days that have elapsed between one bombing and the next. And so, so you, you do have somebody very sophisticated that is going to make it a challenge for law enforcement to catch. What about the number of explosives here? We have three within a 10-day period. Uh, that tells me that the suspect has uh, fairly decent resources in terms of putting these explosive devices together? My guess is that they were probably put together all at the same time and that the explosive uh, detonation was actually scheduled uh, a number of days between each one of them. So, so what that means is that my guess is that now that there's going to be heightened security, heightened awareness as to the, the explosives, my guess is that this person will lay low uh, for a few days, perhaps maybe even a few weeks, and then they will, they will come back again. These folks cannot help it but make themselves known, uh, especially when they're, they're, they're thought of themselves as being forgotten. They want to remind the rest of the world that they're still out there uh, terrorizing others. You know, is this uh, three different, well, we'll just call them bombers, three different bombers, or is it one person? Uh, is it a serial type of bomber? Right, so law enforcement is trying to, to answer that question, right? But what they've told us so far is that they believe all of these have an association of some sort, which basically could mean that they come from the same source or that the same person actually put it together, right? But one of the things that they look for, obviously, is the signature, as I mentioned earlier, is the idea that, you know, how were these bombs put together? Is there some DNA that can be traced back? Uh, could it be put together by one person? Or will the person need the help of two or three other people? So all of those questions are being answered by, by the very meticulous and very well-trained FBI, ATF, and, and, and Austin Police Department folks, and DPS is helping out. Uh, they're putting all of this together, and they're kind of reconstructing even how the bombs went off, the, the type of explosives that were used, all of those uh, questions and the MO, as we call it in the law enforcement community, the modus operandi, is going to be something that is going to help them determine whether or not this is likely one person, two people, or this is a group of individuals uh, causing harm of the innocent people in Austin. Dr. Alex Del Carbon at uh, Tarleton State, thank you, sir, for your expert uh, advice and insight on these Austin bombings. Unbelievable. Yes, thank you. I wonder. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm wonder will we hear one again today? Yeah, or uh, tomorrow. You know, and and the entire city, as you can imagine, of Austin <laughs> is just on edge as authorities are, are are really doing all they can to find the what suspect the, and put it together. What about the guy that walks into packages and sure. in office sure. buildings and sure. sets them down? Yeah, and, I mean, well, and, wow. and this is the thing. And in, in today's world, you know, back, I mean, fifteen, twenty years ago, yeah. you walk out and there's a box on your doorstep that would have stood out. In today's world, yeah. I mean, no, it, it looks normal. Think about it down in the parking garage. Uh, right, yeah, yeah, down sure. here, down sure. here, right by sure. here. They leave packages all the time. All the time.